did not expect this from Demon Slayer. It turns out mothers are not safe even on Mother's Day. And of course, we also got to talk about Genya's backstory in this episode. There is so much to discuss, so remember to subscribe and like the video. It helps me out tremendously. It makes my day so much better. Also, it lets me know you want more Demon Slayer content, so let's jump into the episode. So there was a lot that happened in this episode. Let's start with the attack that would have seemingly from the last episode killed the demons, but it turns out it actually didn't and only slowed the regeneration of the demons. This is when Tanjiro realizes that there has to be a fifth demon and that demon has to be, well, the core of them all. So if he strikes this fifth demon down, then it should kill all of the others, which I think is probably true because when Muichiro first struck the demon, it was in a totally different form that we haven't seen since. Also, as well as we're getting into this video, if you spoil anything in the comments below, you will be banned. I do not care about spoilers. It does not affect me, but it does matter to my viewer base. So I simply will read your comment. I'll get a chuckle out of it and ban you. We've had a lot of these recently, so I want to be thorough in stating that. But he doesn't have much time to think, so Ginya grabs Tanjiro by the throat and strangles him in a rage and a huge surprise, all the while yelling at Tanjiro that he's going to be the one to beat the pillar, not him. So, which being strangled, Tanjiro sort of just gives it and gives his best good boy thingy impression that he always does, and it gets actually Ginya to calm down enough to let go of his throat, which I think goes to show once again that Tanjiro really is just a force for change. He can make people do really anything he wants, I think. But they then track down the fifth demon, who is northeast and hiding somewhere near the ground. Initially, I didn't really understand what this meant, but as well, we see pretty much immediately that he's just a tiny little dude. But so as Tanjiro does this, both Ginya and Nezuko fend off the demons countless attacks as they've pretty much all have healed at this point and they can go back into the fight. But Ginya is able to track down the fifth demon who has a cute little demon. Yes, he is. He's so cute. So of course, Ginya tries to shoot it, but it doesn't work and the tiny demon gives chase which is weird but there's a good reason for it and to make matters much worse even when he goes to slice off the head of this tiny little demon his blade actually surprisingly breaks as his neck is seemingly so thick almost impossible to cut all the while, this gives the other demon emotion time to strike Ginya from the back. And this was just a really awesome sequence to see. I love this entire thing. I also like the idea of a tiny, weak little demon like him being basically almost impervious to most attacks. It is so, so cool in my opinion, just that juxtaposition. And this isn't the first time that they're going to play with juxtaposition between two things that are contrasting in this episode. They do it quite a bit, actually. So this is when we get a flashback for Ginya in which we learn he wanted to become a demon slayer to have someone forgive him and we are not quite sure initially who that is but we get insight to what Ginya's family is like how his mother never slept a day but worked day and night despite her small frame and his father was big but apathetic and to him it's no surprise someone would want to stab him to death which is the way he died so this is the example I was talking about they really play with a lot of juxtaposition with Ginya's character and really this season so far and to make matters worse though with his family life Life, he would hit both Ginya and his mother, but even still, his mother would protect her children without any hesitation. So this put in Ginya's mind that she was someone amazing. Well, a hero, and she really was. But one day their mother disappeared, and when a knock on the door happens, a demon attacks only for his brother to tackle it so they could gather the other kids and escape. And immediately, you just realize, oh God, this is their mother, because their mother was established to be gone for some reason. So it turns out that the demon was, to no one's really surprised here, I think, their mother. And so in a state of panic, Ginya actually blamed it on their brother, as he thought at the time in the state of panic that he murdered her, who was, I mean, they were already dealing with a lot of their other siblings, who some of them were, were bleeding a lot. He even described their bodies as, as cold and still, which Ginya still wonders to this day how him berating him in that moment like him like he did, how that has affected him. However, they moved forward as their dad, according to his brother, was stabbed to death and so they agreed to protect their family together, just the two of them. And that's really the gist of all their backstory, but 
I have two questions coming from this. Who turned their mother into a demon? Was this just a random act uh, or, or was this on purpose to some degree? We don't know quite yet. Also their brother, did he stab their father to death? It really seemed like he was sort of emotionless in that moment, but we're not quite sure yet. My thoughts is that it's definitely a possibility that he's the one who stabbed their dad to death. I mean, their mother died, so there was really no reason to protect the father beyond that. I mean, they're already on their own anyways. It's not like their dad is going to do anything to help them, right? He's, he's a worthless sack of nothing. So we'll see if they're going to expand upon that even more. We'll, we'll find out. But snap back to reality with Ginya almost cursing himself as a person who has no talents or breaths, and so he can't be a pillar. And this is the twist when we realize it was his brother who called him worthless and even disowned him as his own brother, which is, <sighs> that's tough. That is tough to get out of. So Ginya is then broken out of this state by Tanjiro who tells him to give it his haul one more time. Just one more time, try to slice at the neck of this tiny demon. But in the moment, Ginya can't. He just can't do it. So he tells Tanjiro to do it. And so Ginya in turn takes the full brunt of the demon's attack, leaving him with uh, these horrid holes strewn across his body. And so Tanjiro goes in to cut his neck. Will he be able to cut his neck? We'll find out in the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. Overall, I really enjoyed Ginya's backstory in this episode. However, I don't think for a second he's dead, not at the least yet. The only reason I think this is because he's taken repeatedly mortally wounding hits and gotten up and survived. Plus, we still don't know the nature of his ability, really, which I have a theory on in my last video. Check the cards in the, the upper right. But to give a gist, I think he's a demon of some kind that's been in hiding just like Nezuko. So I think he'll easily survive this one and will be out of the fight until he probably heals enough of those holes in his body to move somewhat. But as for his backstory overall, I loved it. I was very surprised they actually went into this sort of detail too. It just goes to show how underrated I think Demon Slayer is by a vocal minority. To me, a mid-story, which is what these people call Demon Slayer, is something that doesn't try to tell you a story, something that doesn't try to teach you something or make you think about something. Demon Slayer is not mid because Demon Slayer is a series that makes you think about characters, choices, and most importantly, philosophy, and even a little bit of history. I was quite moved by Ginya's backstory because it was was simply put, moving. He saw his mother as a superhero who would take the abuse from his deadbeat dad, a, a leech, for all of her kids. Happy Mother's Day, by the way, and a big thank you to my mother for raising me. But besides that, Ginya was clearly affected by his mother, and it shows with how he wants to protect his family, and also how he emotionally reacted to his brother. I mean, he loved their mother so much that he was wrought with tragedy that he would say something in a moment that he probably shouldn't have. That's how much he loved her. This would then spiral his brother down a path of eventually becoming a demon slayer and disowning his own brother. That moment, whatever it was affected him deeply and even Ginya wonders just why he said what he said and just what he was thinking in that moment. Ginya is a great character in the series so far, but we will have to see if he'll die or not or if he's just got a lot left in the tank. Either way, tell me your thoughts on this episode of Demon Slayer and remember to show others the kindness you deserve. I am truly grateful for your viewership. Thank you for watching. Bye bye